previous revised episode, number 162, I showed you how to implement tree-based navigation where we have a page model which can have multiple nested pages underneath it, and those can be linked to like this. Now, in this episode, we'll be building on this application but focusing on a different topic, and that is how the model is represented in the URL. Now the default approach of Rails is to just use the ID of the record in the database in the URL, but that isn't very helpful to the user. It doesn't tell them what page is represented by this URL, and also if we include the name of the page in here, that can help with search engine optimization. Now in episode 314, I showed you how to accomplish this using the friendly ID gem, and this is a good approach, but can be a little bit heavy if you aren't using all of the gem's features. In general, I prefer to write something from scratch over using a gem if it's fairly easy to add. So that's what we'll do in this episode. Let's take a look at a few different approaches on how we can get the name of the model in the URL. By far the easiest approach is to go into the model and just override this method called toParam. This is a method that Rails will trigger when it needs to represent the model in the URL. By default this is just going to return the record ID, but we can tack on anything we want onto the end of this, such as the name of the model. And then we can call parameterize on this to uh, make it URL friendly. So now when we visit another page, it's going to include the name of the uh, page in the URL here. Notice it replaced any odd characters, such as spaces, with dashes when we parameterized it. However, it still includes the ID of the page in the URL, which is necessary unless we want to change how the record is found. Now the way this works in Rails is a little bit of a trick. When you pass a string to active records find call, it's going to call 2i on it to convert it to an integer. And the way this works in Ruby is that it just strips off any non-numeric characters at the end of the string to make it an integer, and then it finds that record with the ID. So that's why it's necessary to include this ID here, but there are times that you might not want this, maybe for aesthetic reasons, or perhaps security issues, you don't want to allow the user to just use any ID to fetch a record. So in that case, how do we get just the normal string to find the proper record? To do this, I'll need to add another column to the database so that we can reliably fetch a record based off of that URL parameter. A common convention is to call this slug, and you'll probably want to add an index to this because you'll be doing a lot of finds on it in the database. So let's migrate the database to add that string column. Now we can return this slug attribute when we call to param. However, how do we set this slug value? Well, we can do that in a before filter. So before save, let's uh, generate the slug, and I'll define a method down here for doing so. And then we can set the uh, slug value to the name and parameterize that so it's URL friendly. And you probably only want to do this once so that way the uh, URL doesn't change when you edit the name. Now you'll probably want to add some validations for this attribute because it's important that the slug attribute be unique and that it exists. Now these validations are going to take place before uh, we do our generate slug callback. So you'll probably want to change this callback to before validation. Also, in some cases, you might want to present this slug field to the user in their edit form, but I won't be getting into that here. Now, I already have page records in the database, so I need to generate a slug for each of those. I can just call page.findEach here in the console and save each of those records. Now, find each is just a way of doing batch finds, so that way if we have a lot of records, it doesn't load them all into memory at once. And you might want to toss this into a rake task uh, so that you can perform it in production if you're already deployed. We're not quite done yet though because we still need to change the way pages are found in the controller. For example, in this show action, instead of finding the record by the ID, we need to call find by slug. And I'm using the Bing version here so that it raises a 404 error if there is no record found. Now we'll need to perform the same kind of find in several other actions. And instead of duplicating the behavior, a common practice is to move it into a before filter. Let's call it find page. And let's only do it on the member based actions which are show, edit, update and destroy. So I'll define that as a private method down here at the bottom and that is going to have the same behavior as the show method and that means we can just remove all the member based finds that we're doing throughout the controller. Now there are several other different approaches to doing this as well besides using a before filter. One option is to rename this method to page and then uh, cache this so it only does a find once and then make it a helper method. So this way you can always use this page method instead of accessing the instance variable directly both in the controller and in the view. 
I really like this approach because it's lazy loaded. It doesn't hit the database unless we call this. That means if we uh, add some caching, we might be able to avoid the database find entirely. If you like this kind of thing, you might also want to check out Decent Exposure, which I covered in episode 259. Here though, to keep things simple, I'll just stick with the before filter. Now let's try this out. When we use the name of the page in the URL instead of the ID, it'll find that record based off of the slug. And the links to the other pages work as well. Now what if we want this to be at the root of the uh, path instead of having this pages resource name in the URL? How do we do this? Well, let's go to our routes file and there I have this resources pages route and the resources method allows me to pass a path option where I can specify what prefix I want the URL to be. And if I set this to an empty string, it'll be up to the root URL. However, you might not want this to apply to all of the actions. Uh, for example, the index new and create actions, you might want to keep that a pages prefix. In that case, we can make two resources entries for pages here, one with, with the uh, path prefix and have that only for those actions, and one without that path prefix without those actions. Now visiting any pages shows us that the page path uh, goes straight up to the root URL. However, going to create a new page, you have to go to pages slash new, so that uses the prefix. You have to watch out with this approach though because this is a type of catch-all route and should be placed at the bottom of your routes file. For example, if we have a route that looks like this defined below it, you won't be able to access this because it will trigger the pages show action instead. Also, keep in mind that pretty much anything you type here without a slash is going to trigger that show action. This raises a record not found exception, which will display a 404 error to the user, which is what we want. However, it's still going to uh, do a find on the database, so there might be performance issues related to that. You might want to add some caching if there are. If you're going with this approach, it's also a good idea to add a validation to the slug to ensure it doesn't conflict with existing URLs. For example, we can add an exclusion validation here to make sure that it's not in, let's say, our sign up or login URLs because those are already uh, existing pages that we have on our application. I want to cover one more technique here and that is nesting the page names in the routes. For example, if we go to our pricing page, this is nested under the products page. So I want it to be uh, products slash pricing in the URL, but that's not going to work. The reason this doesn't work is because Rails uses the colon operator when it grabs the ID for the resources route, like this, and that doesn't accept uh, slashes in there. So what you can do is use an asterisk instead of a colon, and that way it'll grab the entire path, including the slashes. So we could point this to the page's show action. Now when I try this again, it's going to trigger that show action and set the ID parameter to this entire path. So let's uh, fix this so it just grabs the proper portion when it does the slug search. In a real application, you'll probably want to check the entire path to make sure the parents are correct. But in this quick example, I'm just going to split the ID parameter based off the slash and grab the last element and do that uh, slug query with that. Now when I try it again, it will fetch the proper page. All I want it now is to uh, uh, have the links linked to the nested pages as well. I can do this by using a helper method whenever I need to link to the page, such as in this sidebar here, I can uh, make a helper method called nested page path or something similar, and that can go under the pages helper. And defining that method, which accepts the page argument, and I need to grab all the ancestors for this using the ancestry gem and then append our page object to it. And then I can map all the uh, two param calls, so that'll convert it to a URL format, which I can then join with a slash. And let's add a slash at the beginning here so it's a path. And let's try this out. Clicking on a couple links here shows us that it's going to the proper nested path whenever we visit a page. Cool. Well, that's it for this episode. I showed you here a few different techniques for adding the model name to the URL. Thanks for watching. I hope you found it useful.